Hi, I'm Rust, and I'm here to help you get started publishing and sharing your machine learning models and data sets using Weights and Biases Registry. This video will briefly touch on how to log artifacts using Weights and Biases, followed by a demonstration of how you can publish your best performing and most useful models, data sets, and other artifacts to Registry. But before we go any further, let's define Registry. Registry is a curated central repository that stores and provides versioning, aliases, lineage tracking, and governance of models and datasets. Whereas other model registries are only for models, Registry and Weights and Biases is flexible. Registry can store models, datasets, or any other artifact used or generated when you run machine learning experiments. This is a central repository curated by ML platform engineers to facilitate an efficient and effective ML lifecycle. Registry allows individuals and teams across the entire organization to share and collaboratively manage the lifecycle of all models, datasets, and other artifacts. Rather than limit access to published artifacts to a single team or group of users, Registry lets you publish and share artifacts across your entire organization. As the single source of truth for which models are in production, Registry provides the foundation for an effective CI-CD pipeline by identifying the right models to reproduce, retrain, evaluate, and deploy. Registered artifacts are shared downstream not only with individuals and teams, but automated CI-CD processes that can easily retrieve them from a central repository. All right, let's quickly walk through how to log artifacts from your experiments and weights and biases. Artifacts enable users to log and version large serialized files. These can be models, datasets, images, pretty much anything that can be written to disk. To create an artifact, all a user needs to do is create a run, create an artifact object, giving it a name and a type, and then adding the path to the directory or file to that artifact object. During the run, weights and biases will log the artifact along with useful metadata. Here's an example of some code that logs model checkpoints during a training loop. It tracks training metrics. It tracks evaluation metrics. And at the end of each epoch, we're serializing the model to Onyx. In this snippet of code, we're creating an artifact object, giving it a name, defining it as type equals model, and also adding some metadata, such as the format, number of classes, etc. And finally, we're adding the path to the Onyx model file to the artifact and logging it as part of the run. When you log an artifact, you can also append aliases to indicate which versions are your best or latest during the course of training. So now that we've logged this artifact, how do we find it? In the Weights and Biases workspace, you can find your artifacts in the Artifacts tab. Here we can see all artifacts that have been logged for this project as the team has iterated and retrained the models. On the left here, I can see our model from our most recent run, which has five log checkpoints. This model includes the best alias that I can use to determine which model had the best performance. With artifacts, I can explore all of the metadata associated with these files, such as when it was created, the number of files, the size, and importantly, the exact experiment which generated this model checkpoint. I can also more closely inspect the metadata, the files themselves, and examine the lineage of all upstream and downstream experiment runs and artifacts. Weights and Biases Artifacts is a convenient way to store and manage all of your model checkpoints and other artifacts over time for a given project. And you can see there are a ton of models and other artifacts here, and I probably don't want to have to spend a ton of time digging into every single one to identify which is the best performing model that I want to move on to production or stage for further evaluation? Or which is my most useful log data set that might be helpful for other teams working on other projects? Registry essentially lets us bookmark or publish 
the best models, data sets, and other artifacts that we have for a single project or that may be relevant across multiple projects. So without further ado, let's take a look at registry. Up top, you'll see the two core registries, one for models and one for data sets. So what makes these core registries? By default, the contents of both of these registries are available to all users in the organization. Also by default, and as you might expect, the models registry is intended for models and the dataset registry is intended for datasets. These core registries are a great place to store models and datasets that are likely to benefit multiple users and teams throughout the organization beyond just the team that published the artifacts. Now let's talk about these custom registries. I mentioned earlier that one of the key strengths of registry is the flexibility it offers. It's flexible in that it lets you store any type of artifact, models, datasets, images, it's also flexible in that you can use the core registries and the custom registries to organize your published artifacts in the manner that is most ideal and most efficient for your organization. In my organization here, we have a custom registry entitled Product Classification Artifacts. This registry contains both models and the raw images used to build these models. Sharing information with other users about these collections is easy. Just click View Details to check out the artifact card, or model card in this case, that includes important metadata and also lets you post a comprehensive description to make sure everyone's on the same page. Before I show you how to create a custom registry, I'd like to quickly show you the settings for this one and the access control options. You can see here, below the name and description, that we have a pull-down for visibility that lets us make this available to either the entire organization or just to specific users determined by the administrator. And finally, another pull-down for accepted artifact types. This is where we decide what limitations we'd like to place on this registry as far as what types of artifacts can be stored in it. And here you can see our access control settings. For each user of this registry with organization-wide visibility, the administrator can assign a role, either viewer, member, or admin. For example, this user is currently a member, meaning she can modify the artifact. But if I want to limit this user to only be able to use the model and not change it, I can change the role to viewer. This is really important because only the member and admin roles can add or remove artifact aliases. And it's these aliases that indicate to other users and to CICD processes which models and other artifacts are ready for some type of action. Further, adding specific user-defined aliases to artifacts can be used to kick off automated CICD processes using the W&B automations feature. Now, in the custom registry that we just looked at, there are two separate collections, one for models and another for raw images. Of course, it would have also been possible to create a dedicated custom registry for product classification models and another one for product classification images, or to create a custom registry solely for the team that owns the project. Again, between the flexibility and access control permissions, Weights and Biases lets your organization arrange registry in the way that makes the most sense for you. Okay, just so I can show you how easy this is, let's go ahead and add another custom registry here. We'll start by giving it a name. We're going to call it Nature Image Classification Models. We can just give it a simple description. Custom Registry for Models. We'll set this one to Restricted. So it'll basically be Invite Only. And then we'll select the Accepted Artifact Types, which in this case will be only Models. Now I just click Create Registry and we're ready to publish models here. Let's go back to our Nature Image Classify project that we used to demonstrate artifact logging. We've run a fair amount of experiments here and we've logged a lot of artifacts, but the best performing model is the final version from our most recent run. This is the one that we want to publish, version four. I'm now gonna go ahead and click Link to Registry and you'll see this form slide over from the right. 
I'm going to select Nature Image Classification Models as the registry. And I'm going to create a new model collection and call it PyTorch Classification Models. Let's go ahead and give our model an alias. It's the first to be added, but we'll go ahead and call it Best and then link it to registry in this new collection that we just created. As you can see, as the inaugural artifact in the collection, it automatically receives the V0 and latest aliases as well. And one other very important thing to show you here is how you can retrieve this model, whether it be as part of other projects or downstream in your CI-CD pipeline. Good news, it's super easy. Just click the usage link up top and you'll get a couple of lines of code that you need to add to pull this model directly into any process designed to reproduce, retrain, evaluate, or deploy. Now, we spend a lot of time talking about models, but one of the really valuable features of Registry is that it lets you publish and share any type of machine learning artifact. I want to quickly show an example of publishing a data set to the entire organization that can be useful for a bunch of different use cases and projects. This is a customer segmentation project that I've been working on. The goal is to separate credit card customers into meaningful clusters and then try to figure out the best personalized offers for each group. The data set used for this analysis is a credit card transactions data set that tracks customer purchases using their cards. The data set is useful for behavioral clustering, but it might be equally useful for a churn analysis. Let's go ahead and link this one to our core dataset registry. I click Link to Registry, I select Dataset, and we'll create a new collection. And we'll call it Transaction Data. And then we'll go ahead and link it to the registry. And again, you can see that Weights and Biases has added the V0 and latest aliases to my published dataset and now everyone with the right permissions can use this data set in their own projects. And that concludes the Getting Started video. Thanks so much for your time, and please enjoy the many benefits of Weights and Biases Registry.